In this short video, we're going to talk about linearity or linear properties of infinite sets. Really what we're going to do is try to understand how we could do some linear algebra with infinite sets. For starters, we're going to say, well, how can we form a linear combination from objects in an infinite set? And remember, our infinite set S here could be, for example, a set of the powers of x. So we'd have x raised to the power of n, where n is any natural number. So that's n starting from 0 and just counting upwards, 0, 1, 2. So all powers of x. That would be an infinite set. Another example, let's see exponential functions, where we have all possible coefficients as on the exponent times x. So here we're just going to have k is a real number. So now remember, the first set, the powers of x, where the power is a natural number, that is a countable set. And so we actually have an option here of rewriting that as a sequence. We could say that it's going to be 1 x, x to the power of 2, x to the power of 3, and so on. But our second set, where our index set is the real numbers, that is uncountable. And so this is the only way that we can write it using this set builder notation. So that's what we're talking about in this particular example. We've got some set of vectors. Remember, the vectors could be functions or matrices, or, or they could be vectors in Euclidean space. Uh, they're contained in some uh, real vector space. The index set is just some set of numbers. It could be the natural numbers or the real numbers. And so now we want to form a linear combination of vectors from this particular set. And there's three steps that we're going to take. So the first thing is we're just going to take a finite subset. Even though it's an infinite set, we're going to take a finite subset. So we'll have double subscripts here. So i is going to be some number from the index set. And then the subscript would be the example. So uh, in our example before, we could have something like uh, maybe we would have only the uh, first few even powers of x. And we'll include 1 in there. So that would be our finite subset. Then we just choose coefficients from the real numbers. These are just simple scalars. And uh, then we just form the linear combination as we normally would. And again, don't get uh, overwhelmed by the notation here. The O dot and the O plus, when it makes sense, we're just going to write that as using our new usual notation. If it's just going to be the standard scalar multiplication uh, and the standard addition for the vector space that we're in, then we won't be using the O plus or the O dot notation. We'll just write that in the usual way. All right, well, once you have an idea of what a linear combination is, then you can talk about the span, because the span is the set of all possible linear combinations. Now, remember, we just defined a linear combination in terms of a finite subset. So span means we're going to take all possible linear combinations from all finite 
subsets of S. And remember, our definition of linear combination is only for a finite number of vectors. So you cannot, it's just simply not defined. There's no such thing as a linear combination of an infinite number of vectors. So if you have countable sets, then you can get a little bit uh, simpler uh, definition. If I have a countable set here, uh, then I could just say a linear combination is any expression of the form where you just start from zero and go up to k for some uh, k in the uh, natural numbers. And so the idea is that you just pick some k. Maybe you're going to have a lot more coefficients or a lot more terms with a lot of coefficients being zero, but it's a simpler definition. Here, let's go back to our example, the powers of x, so um, monomials, right? Specifically, that would be the set of all monomials. Um, this set S is not contained in any of our polynomial sets, none of the Pn for any value of n, but if you take any linear combination, remember, because linear combination has to have a finite number, uh, then that is a polynomial. n is a polynomial in Pn, because the highest degree is n. And so the way of thinking of span of S would be the set of all polynomials of any degree. All right, so here we have uh, the notion of span. We have the notion of a linear combination. What does it mean for a set of vectors to be linearly independent when there's infinitely many vectors in the set? So since we can't write down a linear combination of an infinite number of vectors, we can't have a dependence equation with an infinite number of vectors. However, we can, again, use a finite subset. And the whole idea is that now to show that the set is linearly independent, it's not sufficient to show that one subset, one finite subset, is linearly independent. You're going to have to show that all finite subsets of vectors are linearly independent. Now, if you think about it, that's really not so bad, right? Because if we go back to our powers of x example, We know that if we take any finite subset of these, well, these are all distinct powers. They're all different uh, numbers there. And if I take any finite subset, I'm going to be taking polynomials of different degrees. And so any set of polynomials with different degrees we know is linearly independent. So we can say, based on that previous theorem, that this set is linearly independent. Yeah, all right. So here's our formal definition then of linear independence. And we've got a, a set. It has vectors in it. Uh, with some index set, which could be the real numbers or natural numbers or some other uh, infinite set. Um, we're going to say that it's linearly independent, provided every finite subset of S is linearly independent. That means if you take any finite set of vectors from S, that your dependence equation only has the trivial solution. Things do simplify again just like they did for the idea of span when we have a countable set. Uh, we can say that S is linearly independent provided that for all natural numbers k the only solution to the dependence equation when you stop at k 
is a trivial solution. So we're not going to spend a lot of time working with uh, infinite sets, but I think it's uh, worth having the understanding that, most importantly, you can't form a linear combination of an infinite number of vectors, and the definition of linear independence means that every finite subset, but every finite subset from a given set has to be linearly independent in order for the set to be linearly independent.